So this is kind of a different type of video for me. I'm going to start off talking about xenogenders, but this is really a video about how to find proper sourcing. Now, the reason I'm starting out with xenogenders is because I initially started making a video on xenogenders again and realized the main crux of the argument was about sourcing and I didn't provide any tips on how to, first of all, find out if something is credible. Second of all, how to even research those things in the first place. So I am just going to lead into it a bit with the xenogender thing, and then we're uh, going to get into actually how to find good scientific sources and how to vouch that the people writing them are not biased. And if they are closed studies, um, ways that you can access them. So the thing with xenogenders is essentially I have been talking about xenogenders starting on TikTok and moving to YouTube um, for a little over two years. I also did talk about transmedicalism a little bit on an account I shared with my ex-fiance. Um before that, but that was a very short-lived account, so I'm not really counting that. But I have never had a conversation with a xenogender user where they understood proper sourcing. Um, now, it does depend on what you're talking about, what's considered a proper source, because if you're writing an, a book report, a snippet out of that book, as long as you put the line and page number, is good. But if you're having a conversation about something in science, a snippet out of a random fiction book is not good. But in this context, Xenogenders have been disproven by science. There is scientific proof that brains have gender. Now, that doesn't mean that they are binary. Um, I will link all the studies in this that are linked in my other video, but I will also link my Xenogender video, which has all these studies in it, um, linked in the description, one of which is talked about in the video, or I believe two of which. Um, but there are scientific studies that show that brains are gendered pretty conclusively. It's not a solid science yet, but for example, there is a study that shows that over 60% of the time an AI can predict someone's gender identity, including trans people, um, accurately, which exceeds chance at 25%. This study was also trying to create a diagnostic tool to diagnose people with gender dysphoria. But it is rather hard to learn how to find those studies. And because also not all scientific journals are created equal. There are journals that are scientific journals that are not peer reviewed. And those are not ones you want to use. There are scientific journals that are only available on paper and that you would have to order from somewhere that are usually only accessible if you're a college student, especially and well, not sometimes only if you're in that field. There are studies that are closed that are talked about in articles that aren't scientific. And you may not be able to access that study, but how do you know that the article is accurately representing it? So that's the kind of thing that we're going to go over. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this and we're going to switch to a screen share um, of just on OBS. So we're going to move to that. But this video is honestly aimed at people who argue for xenogenders because I would love to see you guys give me some proper sources because it's insanely infuriating to do hours of research looking for good journals and then proceeding to find that no one else cares enough about sourcing to give you good sources. Um, I'm going to go over a few do's and don'ts actually first before we move to the screen recording. Um, first of all, don't use anything not made by a professional. A card link, unless it's just a compilation of sources, like a list of links, is not a good source. You don't know who made that. Um, there's no verification that they made it. Even if this person claims to have some kind of expertise, unless they link to a public record of their PhD, um, you don't know that. And they usually consist of personal experience. <gasps> so to start out, um, here is the kind of commonly cited Xenogender card, right? So just a little before we start thing, saying don't harass anyone, that's fine. Um, it's not very... It shows that it's not made by a professional because otherwise it would just be scientists and stuff. But, you know, um, here is them explaining what a xenogender is. None of these are links. Um, none of these underlined or highlighted things are links. So all of these are just claims. For example, due to this, they also interpret social constructs such as gender differently. This thing that says social constructs such as gender, it's not even a link to a different thing on their page. I'm clicking it. It's not going anywhere. Um... So none of this is cited. All of this is just someone talking. And then do you understand? Yes. And then they just have a list of them, right? So we're going to click on this one because it's right there. Um, all it does, the only link on this page is linking to the person who created the thing. It explains what the gender is, whatever, that's fine. Um, 
but there's no, the only source in here is, let's click on this person, uh, to Twitter. Uh, okay, well, it says their account is suspended, so that also shows that this isn't up to date. I actually didn't click on that before. Yeah, so even their source of being some random Twitter user isn't even up to date. So the next bad source is a fandom wiki, or really just Wikipedia, unless you check its uh, um, its sources at the bottom. Now, this one is the gender wiki page for Xenogender. Um, if you click on these, it just goes to different pages on their own website. Um, I'm clicking on, I clicked on female and umbrella term. The only outside link they list here is the non-binary wiki, and a reference to the Wayback Machine, which goes to a website... Um, that's, I believe, made by some kind of transgender ther- um, not therapy, charity or something. Um, here, they're just explaining what being transgender is. So this has nothing to do with xenogenders. Um, which is, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with this website, but it's not a scientific source. Because this was linked as proof that gender is a spectrum. Which I agree with, but there is proof that gender is a spectrum that's scientific and they're not choosing to use that. They're using a random charities website. Uh, which, again, has its place, but whenever there's scientific proof that shows this, it also shows they do not understand sourcing whenever they choose this over a scientific study. So I had to switch to my uh, OBS full screen thing here, so I'm sorry if it's a little glitchy. But here's an example of a study that I have linked in my sources um, about brain gender. Um, so if you can see, this is from the, it's posted on the NCBI, which is just kind of a hub for various multiple um, scientific journals. It's just like an access point for them. But you can see here, it lists both of the people who make it, both of their names are links. Um, I could click on one of the people who wrote it. It shows studies that he's written. Um, who he has written with. You can also click on different types of articles. You can look at just abstracts. Um, when he started writing, which is in 1998, all of this stuff. You can also see um, if I believe, if you, well, also you can just look up their name um, and see if they have a degree. So let's do that. We can look up, I mean, it says MR, but yeah, look, Google Scholar right there. You can see right here he has He's a professor of material sciences and engineering at Sharif University of Technology. Um, and he has a link. They have a link to a verified email at his college. So it's pretty easy to look up. See, this guy is credible. He has a PhD. He's a professor. Um, and to go back to this, at the top, there is a link to the journal that this was published in, which is why I'm doing this in my stupid OBS thing, because this is opens in a separate window. Um, so you can see here it's published in the clinical psychopharmacology and neuroscience journal um journal info everything's available right there you can look at everything about this um scientific journal and see their credibility everything like that it's completely available publicly you can get all of the records about the people who wrote it if they have a degree or not if if you get a link um to a scientific study and you cannot find anything about the people who wrote it or what it was actually published in, because most of the time these are not published on this website here, because this is usually a paper or a paid thing. So you can't, um, you can't like look at everything on here. Like there's some things, let's just click on this like random one. It's about bipolar, right? So this is not a free study. So all we can see is the abstract, who wrote it, and where it was written. Um, because this is a, a study that you would have to pay to access. But if you go here, this has, let's just go to the home page. You can look at pretty much anything on here. You can also look, you can also look for certain types of things. Like here we can click on DNA and RNA. There's a whole section for things on DNA and RNA. You can obviously search. You can search here and decide which journal you want it to come from. So you can select here what journal you want to search, or if you just want to search all of them. Um, so this is not a scientific journal. This is a database of journals. So you do need to check, um, like let's go back. You do need to check this and make sure that this is a credible journal because not all scientific journals are peer reviewed. 
Now, it's also really easy to find out which journals are sketchy. Right here, there's a link to the yale.edu library um, that just lists how to choose a journal, where to publish your journal, and which ones are sketchy, which ones aren't peer-reviewed. Right here, list of suspicious journals and publishers. Um, it's very, I literally just like, look, let's go back. Literally just looked at Bad Scientific Journal. This is the first link, and it's an EDU website. It's very easy to find out which journals are credible and which ones are not. Now, to actually find those studies, a good place to start, unless you already have somewhere like here, if you just have a specific area, like this is the NCBI uh, Library of Medicine. So here, if you already know a database, you can just go there and search something here. So I can go home here and search, let's just type in RNA world, right? And there's a list of things. But if you don't have uh, a database in mind already, you can go to scholarly Google, which is essentially something you need to be careful with because not all of these are scientific journals, but it does narrow it down so you don't get random articles. So I'm gonna type in here, RNA world which if you don't know is about um, abiogenesis. Let's just click on the first one, right? I don't know if this is credible or not. Haven't looked at it before. So I don't know anything about this website, but I can see here, you can't click on these people's names. So you wanna look them up, see if they have credibility, or actually you can click on their names down here, I'm sorry. The, like I said, I clicked on a random one to kind of show a point. Um, click on here, you can see where these people work, that they work at the Departments of Chemistry and Molecular Biology, at a institute for chemical biology that I can't say the name of. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, as well as if you click on the people, again, you can access journals they've written. And it looks like this guy has only written one journal. So you might want to do some research on him. He's only written one article. So you might want to make sure that this is good because it literally says first published article uh, written in 2010. But scholarly Google is a good place to start if you don't already have a database in mind. You just want to go through the steps of making sure that the people are credible, the journal is credible, and the university or organization that they work for is, is credible as well. Um, now, I don't see anything on here. I think I did a bit too much of a refined search here to get kind of random things. Or here, here's one from science.org, right? Like this is a newspaper. It is science, it's a newspaper, but it's not a scientific journal, but here, okay, well, it's making me pay for it. I didn't know you had to pay for this website, but um, presumably they would list their sources. Um, and it appears that here they just have a scan of the scientific journal. So that's enough. Um, but with something like this, you'd want to make sure that it's not just an article written by a person talking about a study, but it actually either links the study or does have the study in its entirety. So here I'm looking at a pretty credible looking website. It's a clinic, um, but this is just an article written by some dude. It doesn't, I don't even see where it says who wrote it. However, what you can do is look through these and see these links. So these little highlights, see if they lead to a study. So this one, it's the guy's name. You can go here and see that um, it's loading, but I can tell from the title up here. Yeah, this is a guy who works at their clinic. Um, and it says here his, his degree, his department, everything. And of course, you can look up this guy just like you can with anyone else. Um, so we know, assuming we do look up this guy and he is credible, that that's a good source. But that's not a study. So here it's talking about basically the stuff I talked about in my video. Um, so here, when we look at the transgender brain, we see that the brain resembles the gender the person identifies as. So we click on resembles the gender they identify as. And here it does link to a study. So, of course, you'd want to go through the same steps and make sure that this is a credible journal. But generally, uh, you want to make sure that there's at least one link that looks like this that leads to a credible study. Um, I don't know if this one is credible or not yet. I haven't looked at it, and I'm not going to make you guys sit through me doing that again. But uh, let's just say it is for the sake of argument. We could confirm that this, at least this portion of it, until they link something else, like down here, that at least the stuff above this is good to go. Um, of course, you want to read these studies, which I know it sounds exhausting to read all of these studies and not just read articles written by lay people. But if you actually want to have a case for your argument, you need to understand what you're talking about. And it's good to start with things like this. This is a, a good 
easier to understand version of it and it links studies. So even if you just skim the study, you know what, it's okay to link this and just clarify, hey, this does have sources in it before I send this to you and before you read it, just know it does cite its sources. Um, because I have gotten links like this before that don't cite sources, that are just articles either written by trans people or doctors or whatever, but they don't cite any studies. Um, and that's all well and good. It's better than like a card, but it's somewhere in the middle of this isn't a study. There's no proof in this because there are bad professionals. I mean, there are doctors who think that trans people don't exist at all. So if someone just being a doctor isn't good enough. Um, again, it's better. It's better than like a card. But really, whenever someone has studies like the studies that I have that are um, all peer reviewed, I checked out the journals and I checked out the people who wrote them for each and every study, which is why it takes me so long to update my card that has my list of studies. But because I read and vouched for every single one of these articles that I link in their entirety, I can tell you, yes, these are good studies. Um, for example, here, like all of these, I can let's just click on the bottom one. Um, all of these provide the information about the people in them. Um, and I research the journal that they're written in, everything of the sort, which is, again, why it takes me so long to update this. I add a new study every month or two. Um, and see, a card link like this, if someone sends you a card, don't automatically dismiss it. I will say that. Because a card can have uh, links in it. It can have sources. Just like this article is not a peer-reviewed journal, but it does cite its sources, a card can do the same. So I wouldn't say immediately discredit it. But you do want to do your own research on if those are good articles, bare minimum, if the journal they're published in is a good journal, um, if not the writers themselves, before saying, yes, this is a good source and I'm going to use it, or yes, you gave me a good source and I'm going to accept it. So there's a lot more kinds of sourcing for different various topics, but for me, I have scientific credible journals and I would like to see the same. So this is honestly really a guide for fucking xenogender people to understand how sourcing works. Because yes, maybe a card with personal experience is okay when the other side doesn't have peer-reviewed research, but when they do, the card is no longer sufficient. You're not on the same playing field. So if I just had my own intuition the same way that they do, or my own experience the same way that they do, well, it'd be really hard to say who's right. And if they were the ones with the studies, I would concede and say they're right. But at the moment... As far as I'm aware, there are no studies on this. At least I haven't been presented with any and I haven't found any in my own research. So please think about this, whether you're on my side or not, before you cite a source. Um, don't link cards unless they link studies. Don't link the LGBTQ wiki at all. Um, it does not, it, hold, it holds up worse than a card sometimes. Don't cite personal experience whenever someone else has already given you a scientific study or recount that, okay, well, my personal experience contradicts the study, so I will no longer be using that as evidence when someone does present it to you. Be aware of what you're talking about. Don't just cite sources because they agree with you or you like them. Be aware of who wrote that source, where that person got their education, and the general consensus on the scientific community on how this study is perceived. Because also just having a singular study does not mean that it's a fact. Having a singular study does not mean it's widely accepted by the scientific community. So while I would love to see a single study, I do have a plethora of them and I'm going to need to be sure that that study has disproven all of mine and that it is more recent than mine. And if they want to argue that gender isn't science, that gender is purely experience, they can still get a study for that because they need a study debunking brain gender. They don't need a study saying, like, you can't, dis you can't disprove a negative, right? You can't say there is no God whenever God hasn't been proven in the first place. But brain gender has been proven. So to say gender is not scientific, you still need a scientific study. You need a study to say, hey, actually, the science that we thought we had on this, it's wrong. We don't know if this is about science now. And I'm yet to see that. Hope this helped, whether you're uh, writing an essay or a xenogender person who thinks you're bred gender, regardless. Hope that this was helpful in some way to someone. Um, thanks for watching. I stare at the populace in